So today I was looking at my collection of control panels from roller coasters, and I thought I'd give my thoughts on this one. This is Raging Bull from Six Flags Great America, a coaster I've had the pleasure of operating. One of my favorite to operate, very efficient. Uh, you may recognize this because a lot of the B&M panels from this time period are pretty much all the same. Um, up here we've got our lap bar controls, and basically how that works, as you can kind of see here, uh, the lap bars are grouped into sections. And so, um, this isn't a great picture because there's no train, but uh, yeah, so once the train parks and they all unlock, um, automatically you press the lock all lap bars and these will start flashing. And uh, the way you can, and so every seat has a sensor in it that tells it that it's far enough down. And the way that the operator can tell is these lights will flash at different rates. So this is section one, so lap bars one and two. And so if the light is flashing just like once a second, that means it's the front row. If it blinks twice and then stops and blink twice and then stops, you know that it's the second row in that section. And if it's just sitting there rapidly blinking, you know it's both lap bars in the set or both rows in that section and so eventually your goal is to get a, get these lights all lit up that means that all the lap bars are locked dispatch buttons will start flashing as long as the dispatch interval is met and you dispatch the train um a little quirk about this ride one of my favorite buttons is this open air gates button and it actually has no function uh to a normal operator when the ride's in automatic mode um, and when it was in first installed, it actually was a blue light, which I really enjoy. And I'm not sure the exact story, but shortly after it opened, because um, it did work when it first opened, they disabled it. Some kid, um, the operator didn't have a clear line of sight, and some kid got stuck. So they decided that only the person at the enable panel, which is the uh, person on the load side of the station, would be able to open and close the gates. And this right here staple six flags so the way uh way b and m delivers it to you uh let's say you press well this isn't a great example of a ride because it's a little more complex because there's three trains but let's say you press the lift stop um all you gotta do to restart the ride is you send someone out to the base of the lift there's a button there that they push and hold and then you just push and hold the ride start button a little horn will play and then you go uh but so most parks, you know, just the operators can restart ride stops and lift stops when that occurs because it's really meant as just an operational stop, you know, someone's on their cell phone or something. But Six Flags, being the way they are, uh, they don't like the uh, the operators having too much control. They only like to let them make the ride stop, go and stop. They don't let them restart it. And so only a supervisor has access to this key. And uh, basically the procedure is the same since went out to the base of the lift and the only difference is you have to turn this key switch to the right and it's spring loaded so you turn it to the right and hold it while pushing and holding the ride start. Um, over here this is the trouble light. Uh, Raging Bull I'd only ever seen trouble lights with alarm so basically the light will blink and you'll get a, a beeping noise that goes with it. Um, in the, the SOP, the standard operating procedures that talked about a trouble light without an alarm, I never heard that on any of the rides. Uh, it's, it was always trouble light with alarm. So the trouble light would go off, and then um, depending on where the issue was, one of these lights will light up. So if it's a severe uh, trouble light, then the E stop will turn on. Otherwise, you know, there are certain ones where only the lift stop will turn on. Uh, this over here, control power on, just means that the panel enables in the on position. Uh, these are the dispatch buttons. So this little ugly thing right here, it's the Six Flags version of a lockout. It's a uh, case you're meant to put over extension cords so that people don't unplug them, but they throw them on all the rides, and that's their, their lockout system is you throw this little flap on there and lock it. Not exactly uh, breaking into a bank figure that out. yeah see here uh, then in the middle red section you know get your lift stop right stop east stop 
uh, lift step, steps, lift motor and chain, ride step, steps, lift motor and chain, uh, closes all the brakes, steps all the drive tires, E step does the same thing, but cuts power to the ride. Um, over here, so up on this top row, these are the black occupied li uh, lights. So when a train is in one of the blacks, say the station, it'll be illuminated. Um, if it's so, and if it's approaching a, a, a black, then it'll be blinking. So after a train clears the lift, the black brake occupied but light will start blinking until the train gets to the black brake in which it will be solid. And then once it passes, it, it turns off and this one starts blinking. Uh, so all this stuff over here is the manual mode stuff or the pretty much maintenance only. Uh, these are how you clear the individual blacks. So let's say you press an e-stop and a train stops on the black brake. Theoretically, you're supposed to have to clear. Actually, I'm not too sure about that one. You're theoretically supposed to be, have to clear a black to send it through. And this is also the manual buttons. So if the ride's a manual and you want to send a train off the black brake, you push and hold it. You want to send it off the lift, you push and hold it. You want to move it over, from here to here, you push and hold it, that sort of thing. Uh, this reset ESR loop, that's the button. That's one of the buttons in the sequence of restarting an e-stop. Uh, this one right here, and these two right here might be of interest to some of you. And it's actually not what you think. So when you see this, you might think, oh, that terrible trim brake that everyone complains about uh, on the Camelback. But it's actually not. There's That's trim brake 2. Trim brake 1 is actually the brake at the top of the lift. And the function of that, uh, according to the manufacturer, is let's say a train gets stopped on the lift, but it's it's crested over, but it hasn't gotten far enough that the train will go all the way over. So you turn this brake on up there to hold the train in place while you get the people off so it doesn't go over with the change in weight. Um, these pretty standard uh, automatic mode. Manual mode, transfer mode, lights, light illuminates based off what mode you're in. These are the key switches. Uh, the maintenance enable, all that that does is it allows the ride to be restarted. Remember when I said that you had to send someone out to the lift to clear it? When you're restarting it with this button up, uh, you don't need to send anyone out to the lift or to the black brake to clear it. It can just be done by a single person. Uh, transfer mode, on and off, pretty self-explanatory. Speed select, uh, I'm 99% sure this has to do with the lift hill because uh, you can either jog it or speed it up. I can't think of what else that would be for. Maybe the drive tires, I had never seen anyone use this. Uh, special function, so Batman, the ride has this too. It's basically when you push this button in conjunction with another button, it does something that uh, a function that's not listed there. So. You press special function and lift, and something else happens. I don't know. Black, it breaks open, something, who knows. Uh, black reset. That's what you use when you're restarting the ride. Um, and acknowledge, all that is is when maintenance comes up to see what the trouble light is, someone goes downstairs to the computer and tells them, and they pretty much just uh, press acknowledge to tell the computer that they understand there was a problem detected. Uh, this is the enable panel, what I was talking about. It's on the load side of the station. You got your ride stop, lift stop, uh, dispatch enable. So you, to dispatch a train, the enable person and then the operator will push their dispatch buttons in conjunction and that sends the train and if any of them release it, the drive tires in the station stops and the train's supposed to stop. Uh, this is a transfer track right here. Pretty much you just push and hold the position that you want to go to and the train moves and then once you're in that position you either advance it or reverse it whether you're taking a train on or off. This has to do with uh, resetting blacks so if the computer thinks that there's a train in a black that there's not you use that to clear it. Uh, and then obviously there's uh, they're called chocks that come out and lock the transfer track into into the line with the track that it's at 
and that light illuminates. Uh, and the way it works, you don't really push buttons together. You, like, let's say, uh, on one side there's the longer transfer track, and so you select which track you're sending it to, and then you push the button, and so press the wrong button, you want to change it to another one, you press clear selection. Uh, these are the A phones, just little phones throughout the ride for people to be able to talk to each other. You know, you got them at the lift, in the station, the queue line, that kind of stuff. So this panel is in the storage track area. Basically just another panel where you can move trains from, forward and backwards. And in order to use this panel, you have to turn the key switch on. Now these are the checks I was talking about earlier. Lock the tray track into position so it doesn't slide around. These are proximity switches. It tells the computer where the train's at. This counts the anti rollbacks. Make sure none of them fell off. That's garbage because these rides are never cleaned. View the transfer track. So the uh, the wheels are actually free. So you can do maintenance on them. Uh, they just sit on top of this, these wheels. And if you look closely at B&M trains, there's little rubber wheels on the side, and that's what the transfer track rides on. Uh, you can see them easier on inverted coasters. They're pretty obvious. This is the service brake. Uh, the way the brakes work, you go service, safety, transfer. Uh, one of my favorite things was uh, when we put on or take off a train. Maintenance was, you know, you'd send it around, and then the train would still be out on the course, and they'd flip it into transfer mode and start moving the track over, and you'd look out, and you'd just see a train careening into the brake run, and there's no track in front of it. I always hoped one day that, that they would fail, and I'd get to see a train fly off this. I think that'd be pretty sick. Empty, of course. Oh. This is when Bull Valleyed. Valleyed on my birthday in uh, 2017, I think. I've got more videos of that, but this is the uh, position that it rested in. And the way that they uh, took it apart, actually, was they cut a piece of the track out between the ties, and then they just disconnected the cars one by one, slid them out with the crane, put them back on the transfer track. And then they uh, welded that piece back on, and you can you can see it pretty clearly uh, from off the ride if you take a look at it. Oh, now we're getting oh, here's some meaty stuff. These are the cycle counters down in the electrical room. The official colors of the train, by the way, according to B and M. This is on the back of one of the. Uh, maintenance instruction things. This is what the entrance looked like when the ride first opened in 99. No lockers. Nice wide and open. Got the test seat in there looking fresh. The original sign which is way better. Let's rotate this around. These are just some maintenance instructions. How to do certain things. Panoramic view of the electrical room. Wheelchair, you know, just in case. Yeah, some in the off season. These are some of the blueprints. It's pretty neat. You can see the the pitch, number of brakes. Here's the lift hill, the base right here, you got your two feeder motors. And then C, right here, trim brake number one, what I was talking about on the, key, on the, on the panel. And the, actually the only reason I know that is because I read the Bizarro SOP from um, Six Flags Great Adventure and there's, there's had an explanation for that brake at the top of a lot of those B&Ms. 
which none of our uh, manuals had it because probably because no one knew what it was. This is the station. Uh, something interesting is you can see there was a budget cut. We were supposed to get a lift stop at the end of the station that does not exist. Six Flags was like, we need to save that hundred dollars. Don't put the button in. All right, yeah, so thanks. So I was a little bit thrown off. Uh, that last picture was the memorial inside the tunnel on the track uh, to rights manager. I'm not going to show his name. Uh, but anyway, here's what the panel looked like back in uh, 02. You can see there's the blue open air gates button I was talking about. Uh, this is the, what the lift panel looks like. So you send someone out to jog the lift. I actually, uh, operators really never restarted this ride. This was a ride that really we only uh, allowed maintenance to restart uh, pretty much because you would have to send someone out to each block to clear it. So if a ride step was pressed, you had to send someone out to the ride, uh, to the block break, and they would have to clear it from up there. And then you'd have to send someone to the lift to clear clear that one. It was kind of just a pain. It was faster just for mates to drive out there and restart it with their one, one button. But yeah, this is a vintage. So I've got a good collection of all the, uh, the old control panels. This is Viper 2000. Um, I think there's actually an older picture of Bull. Oh yeah, here you can see before it was adulterated with that ugly ride step and it start enabled. They had that peeling label on. It was nice and clean before they had that ugly lock on it too. Look how shiny that is. It's all scratched up today. But yeah, I think I'm going to do a couple more of these. Uh, see you guys.